I feel like you could really f somebody up with these, even though, oh, I can't say swear words. You could really mess somebody up with these things, even like with these being plastic. All right, so I'm gonna loosely call this a tutorial video. It's more of like a how-to slash how I made this thing because I'm still trying to figure these out myself. I'll have a material slash code slash file pack available in the description. It'll be on my Patreon. I'm charging like 10 bucks just for my pain and suffering of figuring this out, but it'll include the code, the files, uh, parts list, etc. So go check that out if you wanna build this. Let's get to it. So step one of this build is going to be printing the pieces. So for printing these pieces, I got to utilize some silk filament, which was actually kind of fun for a change. I put these on my new Prusa Mark IV, and I printed them at about 15% infill to keep them light. However, everything else, the gauntlets and the motor mounts, had to be 100% infill so that I can guarantee they'd be strong enough. The actual first step will be to fuse the half one with half two of the top of the gauntlet. You don't have to split these up. I included a complete piece with these two connected and not split. This is just because I was impatient and I wanted to print fast. So you don't have to split this. It's just easier to print. So I'm going to PLA weld this together really quick off camera and then we'll get back into it. So now that you have this piece welded together or printed in one piece, you'll want to check the fitment. So um, I have a little bit longer of forearms. Um, I'm 5'9". I, I don't know how long my forearms are. This is about how they should fit. Knuckles line up with the knuckles, obviously. You'll see in here, there's a little mount right here as well as here. This is where the motor driver board and the nano are going to sit. This is kind of like an alignment mount for the motor. So this is where the motor is going to sit. Same with this. This is just an inset uh, cut just to help you with placement. This hole right here is where the lead screw is going to go. And these two holes right here, I don't know if this is focusing. <laughs> these two lead holes right here are where the rods go, and this is where the limit switch goes. So everything's cut out for you. First, we're gonna start out with these claws. Now, these are gonna get mounted to this little guy right here. You can see there's little slots cut out for the claws themselves. Now, I use Bob Smith Industries. This is CA glue. This is what I use to glue mine in place. You can weld them, it's up to you, but you'll want to glue these in pretty much right away because you're going to start installing things together and these just need to be in place. There is the set of claws glued in. Look, actually it looks like my middle claw got a little jacked up. <laughs> it's a little uneven, but it shouldn't be an issue. It's just, uh, it looks a little fun. So the next step is to grab your lead screw. Now this is a specific lead screw. This is a TR8 by eight. It is a lead. I think it's a lead of eight millimeters. This is really important. This means these threads are, uh, how do I explain this? They're less horizontal. They, they, it's more of a whoop versus a, if that makes any sense. This is going to make your thing go very, very fast. <laughs> And it comes with these fittings, these these uh, little, yeah, fittings. And you can see it go, wee. You're gonna take this little fitting, this little guy, and it's going to fit into this hole. You may have to heat this out a little bit. I wanted it to be a pressure fit, so pretty tight, but it will go into this hole. Um, usually what I do is I just literally take a torch and I go, and then you push it in. Once you have that guy fitted, you're going to notice there is a little bit of a overhang here. You need to trim that. Um, this will get caught when it slides. Right there, overhang. Just dremel that crap out. You can see that it is now flush. So before you go any further, you wanna test these in your gauntlet. Now sometimes you can glue them or weld them slightly not straight and they won't slide properly. See if there's any tension um, in sliding areas. They should just like, it should just slide in and out. That's what she said. <laughs> this lead screw rotates and allows you to basically 
retract and expand these claws. So, you know, as this rotates, the claws move down the lead rod. As you reverse the direction, they come out. It's going to sit like this in the motor mount. The motor's going to rotate and it's going to change the direction of which the lead screw spins, therefore retracting these claws. The important part about this is that you need some sort of rod or like alignment system that stops this from literally just spinning out of control. You can't just have the lead screw, which is where these metal rods come in place. I use two of these just for extra stability. You could use a thicker rod. Um, you'd have to modify the files a little bit, but this is just what I used. You're gonna need one of these tiny little tactile switch guys. You're gonna need an Arduino Nano. You're going to need a DRV8871 motor driver board. Two limit switches. Two shots of a DC motor. This one is a 12 volt DC motor. This is 12,000 RPM, so it is very fast. However, it does not have a lot of torque. This very specific motor coupler, um, it goes from three millimeter to eight millimeter. The eight millimeter goes into the lead screw side and the other side goes into the motor. A USB pigtail, a DC jack pigtail, the male version. And then a lot of wire, which I actually don't know where. Oh, it's over there. Now I figured it would be easier for me to just make an electronics diagram for you guys to follow to wire the system up. It was too difficult to record all the tiny details of wiring this up. So here you go. Just pause and read it when you can. So once you're done with the electronics, it is now time to test it out. I used a um, talent cell power bank to power this system, the DC jack, uh, gives out 12 volts and the USB is 5. And before you try to power the system, remember to upload your code to your Nano. So we'll just turn this on. You can hear it running and I'll hit the button or the limit switch and it stops. So that's downward position. Now if we hit the tactile button, you should hear it go again. Um, that's the backward switch again, so now it's going to go forward, so it's going to run. And we'll hit the forward limit switch, and it'll stop it. Now what I did was I kind of dremeled like a flat section of this, because this is a perfectly round shaft. So then what we'll do, we'll take the small end of this, and we'll just kind of slide it on and tighten these set screws. Now from here, I would recommend uh, starting to install things, um, but very loosely because you're going to have to trim this unless you have a really long forearm, which, you know, if you do, that's really handy. Once you have your lead screw in place, you can screw it onto your claws really quick and then pop the motor mount into position. Uh, it should literally just snap into place. Um, the tolerances are kind of tight, it should just go boop. So then you should have this mechanism, you should have the two rods installed. These aren't glued in just yet. This is just for fitment purposes. So once you have all of this in place, you can put it into your gauntlet, just test it out and see how things fit and figure out how much you need to cut the lead screw. So now my claws are roughly in position and you can see right there, the lead screw is too long. So you just wanna mark that and you're gonna cut that off. Now remember before you cut anything, remove this from the motor. The metal can get pretty hot when you're cutting it. So uh, you also don't want to damage the motor with like the rotation or the force of the Dremel. So to prep for final assembly, I started gluing some things down. I put hot glue on the wired connections on my boards. I CA glued in the limit switches and I glued down the motor just to prevent it from sliding backwards from the force and momentum that it generates. I have these springs and they perfectly fit over these steel rods, and this just kind of helps slow down the momentum when they retract. One thing to keep in mind is that when you're making each separate glove, you need to switch these pins so that the directions are correct. You are also going to want to pay attention to this coupler and the motor. There needs to be that slight little gap in between, otherwise the motor can actually unscrew this coupler while it's rotating. Um, and as you can see, like a little bit, if I can do this here, it does shift, um, that's normal. The motor shaft kind of shifts position when it rotates. Um, you need that gap. So now it was time to put the motor mount inside the gauntlet itself. I made sure the claws were poking out just a little bit and all the motor alignments were in the right place. And then I just took my soldering iron to it and stuck it down. 
Also at this stage, I CA glued in the limit switch and the steel rods. You really have to make sure these are glued in well, otherwise the momentum could knock them loose. Before you glue in the rest of your electronics into this little mount plate, you probably want to test this out. Literally all you have to do is plug it into the power. One thing we haven't done yet is glue in a little piece to trigger the limit switch when it goes down. We're just going to see and make sure that this moves correctly and let's let it rip. If you get a jam like that, it's probably because your lead screw is crooked. So make sure you adjust it. Make sure it's perfectly straight inside of the coupler. Otherwise it's going to jam. I'm going to go do that really quick and then we'll test it again. There we go. Very loud. We're going to fix that though. So what you're going to do here is you're literally just going to glue a little piece of foam to trigger that limit switch. Um, not necessarily this long, but enough that it'll hit like that. You don't want these claws to stick out too much, but remember that we still have to glue on the knuckles and the glove. So that's going to take up some space that's going to kind of hide those guys right there. You don't want them to be fully retracted because they will get stuck on these little ledges when they try to come out. So this is what it should look like once you have it glued in. Just make sure that it is flush or lower than this ledge because you do not want this causing issues when it slides up and down. So now that that is all settled, we're going to start gluing our electronics into these little sections. What I do is I put a little bit of hot glue on this back and then just press them in. And after a little bit of cable management, this is how we're looking. I know it looks a little disastrous. Um, all I did was just add hot glue and some electrical tape. Now at this point in the build, I would recommend strapping this to your arm and seeing if it actually fits. Now, I did this with elastic in my last one. There's just an elastic strap that attaches to the motor mount and then one around the wrist and then everything else just kind of clamshells together with some Velcro right here. But in order to really test how this fits, you really need to add this elastic and see if anything catches on your arm. Um, the glove will help hold your hand into place with the knuckles, but we'll talk about that in a second. So here's a quick test with it strapped to my arm. And we're looking pretty good. There we go. <laughs> so the next step of this gauntlet is probably the most tedious part in my opinion. This is going to be gluing the knuckles in. As you can see, I glued the knuckles of the glove down and then I cut holes out of the glove. Um, this disguises this entire mechanism. It kind of makes it look a little bit less boxy. It's going to look chunky no matter what, unless you put literal adamantium claws into your bones, but this helps disguise it. So it hides this block part here. And then I also uh, redesigned these knuckles so that they kind of have like a fake curve to them. So it disguises that box. You're going to have to stretch your glove over to figure out where things line up. Um, and once you have that in, you'll just put the gauntlet on. You can see that the claws are kind of poking through. What you're basically going to do is cut holes where those knuckle holes are and then glue the edges down to those flat faces on the side. Now, as you can see, I started to cut a hole and basically this edge is going to get glued down. You're just gluing it to this square. You don't want any fabric in the way because they can get caught on the claws. So um, for me, I do this when I'm wearing it, which is kind of difficult, but it makes sure that everything lines up properly. I did a lot of this off camera, but I just hand painted this just for aesthetic purposes. I would recommend that you sand and paint this properly and do that before you glue in the glove. For this, I'm just making a tutorial, so I hand painted it, but still pretty freaking cool. So what I did was I literally just glued the glove to the edge of the gauntlet. I'm gonna clean that up with a little bit of paint, but it's not too bad and it keeps it from jamming. Um, I'm gonna add Velcro to these edges as well. So then you can attach the bottom half of the gauntlet and then you're done. I have to hit them at the same time. Oh, 
hello? <laughs> Why are you yelling? They are pretty, pretty fat, pretty chonky. Now, with this whole system, with the momentum of the, uh, the steepness of the lead screw, they do get jammed occasionally going up and down, mainly on the downward position. If you wanna, if you wanna hook these up, um, so they're running on the same power source on the same uh, power bank I mentioned earlier. Um, you just need a Y splitter for the DC jack and a, a Y splitter for the USB cable. If you were doing a cosplay, you would hide this in like a back pocket, like a like where your butt is or something, and these cords would be hidden away. Or you could use skin tape. I'm not doing a full cosplay, so I'm not doing that for this. Okay, ready? That was really cool. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you can hear the springs. Yeah. <laughs> this one gets stuck a lot at the top for some reason. But like, they're not bad. So that concludes V1 of my Wolverine Claws. Let me know in the comments if there's anything that you think I could improve in this. I'm sure there's a lot, but I would love to make these better for the next time. 